element in Dodge City was ashamed of their town's reputation as the Gomorrah of the Western Frontier. That's why they hired Wyatt Earp to be their marshal in 1876. But it takes time and money to civilize a tough town. The city fathers of Dodge were understandably alarmed when they heard that a reporter for the great and influential New York Herald would be stopping off to write a story about conditions. As for Marshal Earp, it would be a cruel test of his efficiency as a peace officer. Dozens of penny shockers had spread the bad name of Dodge City throughout the land. But if a correspondent of the New York Herald could be impressed by one quiet day... So this is the rip-roaring Dodge City, eh? Where's the dead man they serve up for breakfast? Mr. Jensen, welcome to Dodge. I'm George Hoover, the mayor. Oh, how do you do? And these gentlemen are Council Members Kelly. Sir. Moffat. How do you do? Gale. Hello. And our Marshal, Mr. Earp. Howdy. Well, the famous Mr. Earp. When's the shooting start, Marshal? Well, I uh, kind of asked all the boys to hold off on that until after you got here. <laughs> I think the first thing on the program is breakfast. Well, yes, yes, at my house. The rig's just across the street. Thank you very much, sir. Oh, isn't uh, Mr. Earp coming with us? Well, of course. Oh, thanks, but I uh, got to feed my prisoners. I'll see you later. By all means, I'll expect an interview. Toby, just not so loud. But Mom says you got to stop him from fighting, or she will. All right, all right. Now, uh, who's fighting? The dogs. Bosco, that belongs to Mr. Willett, and Avery, that belongs to Mr. Sam Donovan. Mom says it's against the law, and if you don't stop him, she'll do it with a shotgun. Where's the fight? Behind the Long Branch Saloon, right next to our backyard. I'll be with you in a second. Hurry, sir. Don't wait to put on your coat. Mom will get to shooting. Didn't you men hear what I said? Oh, no, it's her again. I said Toby for the marshal. But if he don't come and stop it, I'll stop it. Keep your temper, Sarah. Dog fighting's a sport, like boxing or anything. No, it ain't. When men fight, that's their business. But sicking two poor dogs on each other, that's dirty, mean, and cruel. Pay no attention, Sam. Are all the bets in? Ooh. All the bets ah, down? On, everybody get in. Come on. Form a circle, man. Form a circle. Spread out. Spread out. I want Jack to get the first barrel. And Sam, the other one. Don't shoot, Mom. I'm from Marshall Earp. Sorry, gentlemen. No dog fights. Yeah, why not? Because you're disturbing Mrs. Cullen, and I don't like dog fights. No? You just like to fight with guns, huh? Well, I'll tell you, Mr. Willard, I don't mind a good fist fight. Why don't you uh, and Mr. Donovan fight our referee? It's a good idea. But if you want your dogs to do the fighting for you, then you better go outside the city limits where I can't stop you. We'll have it some other time. But nosy Sarah ain't around. And how about her threatening us with that gun, Deacon Earp? Well, I'll tell you, Mr. Donovan, you can file a complaint, but then I'd have to charge you with cruelty to your dog. Me? Cruel to him? Now, you've been starving, Avery, to keep him in bad temper. You just move along, Mr. Donovan. I haven't finished my breakfast yet, and I'm kind of bad tempered myself. Yeah. 
Well, you better put away that gun, Mrs. Cullen. Sure, Mr. Earp. And I thank you kindly. Just about time for Toby to get ready for Sunday school, isn't it? Ah, oh, Mom, do I gotta? Yes. Come on. Mr. Earp needs me. Something else might happen. And I'm a special deputy on Saturdays and Sundays. Ain't I, Mr. Earp? Oh, uh, you've been a mighty big help, Mr. Toby. No, he hasn't. He goes galloping after you yelling bloody murder. But, Mom! There's a newspaper man from New York in town. Now, what'll he think of us? No chasing after Mr. Earp today. And not a yell out of you. Yes, sir. So long, Mr. Earp. I'll put you back on the force next weekend, Toby. Yes, sir. Well, thanks, Tom. Sure. Nice, quiet Sunday, Wat. You can use one. The whole town can use one, especially today. Oh, you're talking about that newspaper fellow over at Mayor Hoover's, huh? Mm-hmm. Hal, the eyes of the New York Herald are upon us. Who cares what they think? Well, I'll let you in on a little secret. See, the city's trying to borrow some money, and an awful lot depends on how much... Uh-oh. Uh Gosh, Mr. Earp, didn't you hear the fire bell? It's old man Kaylee's shed. I saw the smoke just as I started... Toby. For, for Sunday school, and the flames... Yes, sir? The fire department will take care of Mr. Cayley's shed. Toby, why don't you stop dogging, Mr. Earp? He started one breakfast, then all... All the... right, all right. Shed will burn clean down before they get those firemen collected. Poor old man. What? Mr. Cayley's in the shed. Dead drunk. Oh, excuse me for mentioning it. I know the shortest cut, Mr. Earp. You try and eat the breakfast. Stay here. Don't try it, Mr. Earp. You'll get burned up. Come on, Mark. Right. Oh, oh, darn fool. Start, start dipping your buckets in full water, boys. Body hot in there. Guess I'll make a try to get the earth out. Drunk, dead to the world. Let her burn, boys. Save the water in case the house starts to hot up. All right, then we won't All use right. it. Mighty spunky work, Marshal. But you ought to arrest him. Third fire he started this year. It's grand arsony, Mr. Earp. Uh, it's just too much to drink. Now, you keep him here. Make him watch it burn. Or let his house burn, too. Have a stronger effect. Now, don't you worry, Mr. K. They won't let your house burn. You still got plenty of time to make Sunday school. What do you sort me for? I didn't yell fire on the street. I'm not sorry. You did a good deed. Then I don't have to go. I can coast maybe until next Sunday. Master Toby, you are in no state of grace to allow any coasting. But I helped you save Mr. Cayley and the ship. Do you want me to cancel your appointment as special deputy? No, sir. I'll go. I'll go. Excuse me, Mr. Jensen. I'm sorry to keep you waiting. Not at all, Marshal. Trouble in town? Nothing like that. Just a quiet, normal day. Excuse me, I'm gonna get myself a little slicked up for church. Now, Marshal, aren't you pulling my leg? In what way, Mr. Jensen? All this talk about how quiet and peaceful Dodge City is. I've had quite a bit of it from your mayor and councilman. Is this town really civilized? Well, uh, no, sir, not yet. How long have you been marshal here, Mr. Earp? Oh, about three months now. How many men have you had to kill in the line of duty? Well, none so far. Really? But there have been killings here. Pitched gun battles, that sort of thing. Oh, yeah. Been a few killings and gunfights. But this is just a normal, quiet day. Not a shot fired since... <laughs> Jensen, I'll be back in a minute. Come on, get in there. Come on. Hal, I 
him up. Come on, sir. Back here. Come on. Take him up. Drunken discharging weapons in the street. Those men were just showing off, Mr. Jensen. Well, nobody got hurt. Oh. I wish you'd put that in your paper. You know, 90% of all the wildness in Dodge is just bragging and bluster like that. You see, it's... Indians! Indians! Indians, Mr. Earp! A big bunch of dolmice men on the warpath. It'll be a massacre. Reverend Halcott sent everybody home from Sunday school and... Hold it. <clears throat> now, uh, there's no truth in this, is there, Toby? Yes, sir, there sure is. They're right outside the town, and they sent a message to Mayor Hoover. You sure? There he is now, and Mr. Kelly. That'll prove it. Now, now, son, it's, it's all right. I can't understand this, Wyatt. A buffalo hunter brought it in. He says there's a war party of Cheyennes this side of the river. Folks are getting a little excited, Wyatt. Excited? They're scared. Mom's loading the shotgun with slugs. Yeah, they want to send a powwow man into town. Guess I better ride out there. Alone? Oh, heaven save us all. Mr. Jensen, I uh, kind of like to have you go along with me out there. Well, I... Well, that's uh, foolhardy, Wyatt. Why don't we let the power man come in and say what he has to say? Because he wouldn't get 50 yards down Front Street. I don't think there's too much risk in it, Mr. Jensen. Anyway, I'd kind of like to have you see how wild rumors run in our town. Very well. Glad to accompany you, Marshal. Wyatt, you want to get him killed by Indians? If he's even scratched the New York... Mr. Carol Mayor... I take it for granted that Mr. Jensen is here to write the truth about us. Isn't that right, Mr. Jensen? That's right, Mr. Earp. Can we borrow your buggy? Oh, and uh, keep young Toby here. Dull knife and his people are on the warpath, you know. No, well, we're friendly. I help Mr. Cousin, Mr. Brother. They're blood kin, dull knife. Promise safe conduct to me and anybody with me. The Cheyennes out there know that? I sure hope so. Friends here? No. What's the trouble? No trouble. Much. My brother got arrow in leg. He went white man's doctor. Put him on a horse. Huh. You shoot him, huh? No. What is your name? Earp. Wyatt Earp. Mr. Cousin of Yellowhand say you are good man. Is there also good white doctor? Doc McCarty. Very good doctor. I will put my brother on horse. I'm most grateful, Mr. Earp. This is the best story I've collected on my travels. Quiet, no violence. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right at Miss Church. If you'd like to have you be my guest for dinner. Thank you, but I doubt if I'll have much of an appetite. Indians scare me. We've given them so many good reasons to shoot. Marshal Earp! Marshal Earp! You better come quick. It's Frogface Perkins and Mr. Kelly. Frogface says he's going to shoot Mr. Kelly. And Mr. Kelly, he's got a gun. All right, all right. Why don't you break it up? Perkins ain't armed. I figure it's a lot of talk. No, it ain't. There'll be a bloody gunfight, Mr. Earp. Toby, I think your mother wants you. Al, take the Indian on over to Doc McCarty's. Mr. Jensen, I'll see you over at the Dodge house in about 10 minutes. And I say you're a cheating a swindler, Kelly. 
You just hang on to that gun. I'm going to get my own gun. Oh, Mr. Perkins. Now, what's all this row between you and Mr. Kelly? He knows. Maybe he'll tell you. Well, let him go for his gun, Wyatt. I ain't running. Now, wait a minute. Put that gun up, Mr. Kelly. Now, there's not going to be any gun fighting today. If I catch either one of you with a gun, there's going to be trouble. You understand? All right. You're the law. Councilman Kelly. Well, I'm in the right of the quarrel. Well, then fight it out some other day. Just when I got this newspaper man thinking we're half civilized, you go and bust loose. Ah, I told George Hoover we could never hide what we are. Let them New York papers print what they like. Mr. Kelly, $100,000 is a big loan in these days. We won't get it. Well, we might. If Jensen doesn't go and print us up as a rowdy bunch. Now, I'm going to ask you as a personal favor not to get in any trouble today. How about it? Well, for what Perkins called me, I should blow his gizzard out. But I owe you the favor. Thank you, Mr. Kelly. There and go, bra. <laughs> Porterhouse steak, 25 cents. Roast of buffalo hump, 30 cents. Prairie chicken fricassee, 20 cents. <laughs> I'll have to show this menu to Delmonico's when I get back to New York. Well, I recommend a quail on toast. It's very good. But that's 50 cents. I don't want to put on airs. You get two whole quail, more than you can eat with vegetables and all. Hmm. Well. I... Yeah, it's just a horse race. I kind of wish the boys wouldn't use Front Street, though. Uh, well, Sully, I'll uh, start with some oysters and uh, some quail on toast. And... I thought I told you that you were supposed to... It's a crooked to... race, Mr. Earp. The Bar D rider followed that lazy H pony. Will you please go home? Yes, sir. But don't blame me if the lazy Hers go for their guns. And if they don't kill a few, the gamblers will. But don't blame me. You go ahead and order. I'll be right back. Our horse got fouled. You hit him across the face with your quirt just as he was going to pass you. That's, That's a dirty line. We want fair and square. That's you lazy H's are just crabby even to get out of paying the bets. Oh, we ain't yeah. paying no bets. You don't welch on us. We'll get our guns and then we'll collect. We got guns too. You bet we should. Let's get this settled. Yeah. Oh, sure. I don't know who was fouled, and I don't care, but I'm calling all bets off. All right. Then we'll run the race over. Next Sunday. What big-headed notion is this, sir? You can't tell us Yes, what... I'm telling you. Now, all bets are off, and the race is postponed one week. You understand? Now, break it up. Oh, I'll bet you not. Go on. Go on. Where's Jensen? Oh, he went with Mr. Kelly. Look at Boot Hill. Just before dark. Yeah, I reckon they went back to Kelly's place to have a drink. Yeah. Well, do you think we put it over? <laughs> Hope so. You want some milk? No, no. Well, it has been a quiet day. <clears throat> no killings, no gunfights, and only two arrests. Yeah, well, we all tried to sit on the lid. Jensen couldn't write anything wild and woolly about us. Well, not yet, no, but I'll sure be a lot happier when he's on that night stage for Kansas City. Maybe you should have stayed with him, Wyatt. Well, he took quite a shine to Jim Kelly. Wish I had more confidence in Jim. Come on, you like Mr. Kelly. Anyway, uh, he's what the newspaper men call a colorful personality. Yes, that's right, but... Toby, are you still dogging Mr. Earp around? No, sir. Well, it must be good news. Whatever it's bad news, he comes in on the gallop. <laughs> I guess it's good. What do you mean, Toby? Well, I don't think Frogface Perkins would actually kill Mr. Jensen. 
He might kill Mr. Kelly, but what's he got against Mr. Jensen? Well, come on out with it. Did Frogface have his guns? A gun, yes, sir. Well, then what happened? I mean, where are they? Boot Hill Cemetery. Good heavens. Tell us, boy. Nothing much to tell, I guess. Frogface Perkins sneaked up and caught him at Boot Hill. Well, then what did they do? Well, he said he was going to shoot Mr. Kelly and then shoot Mr. Jensen because he'd be a witness. But I don't think he'd actually shoot Mr. Jensen. Well, how long ago was this? Just before dark. Good heavens above. What happened after Perkins put a gun on him? I don't know. I got scared and ran. It'd soon be dark in Boot Hill, and that's a scary place, and I wouldn't be scared with Mr. Hill along. Is it all right if I go, too? No, you go home. And if I ever catch you running after Mr. Earp again, I'll, I'll send you to reform school. Reform school? The reform school. Their time is about up, Kelly. Are you gonna buy a footstone for my pal's grave? Never. I spent all the money you give me for the headstone and twelve dollars more. Why that headstone ain't worth no seventy dollars. You're no good cheat, Kelly. You're the lowest skunkin cheat there is. Robin the dead. Mr. Perkins. Yeah? I see no need for this morbid talk. I don't defend Mr. Kelly. He's a stubborn Irishman. <laughs> you hear that, Kelly? But that's no reason for committing cold-blooded murder. I'm reaching for money, not a gun. I don't want your money. I want him to pay. Not one red cent. All right. I'll give you 10 seconds to say a prayer. Now start praying. You start. Shoot him, Wyatt. Let him break his arm. Go ahead. No, stop it. That wouldn't make nice reading in the Herald, Mr. Earp. No, I guess it wouldn't, Mr. Jensen. Come on, Mr. Kelly. Give me a hand over to Doc McCarty's. Get the scalp stitched up. You're hooligans, all of you. Ruthless, brutal hooligans. Listen to that now. You keep frog face from murdering the both of us, and he calls your names. He'll change his mind when he's had a chance to think about it. I'll take a look in your trunk rack if you don't mind. Oh, it's you, Mr. Herb. You hold up stages in your spare time? I thought so. Oh, Mr. Rourke. Now, come on, get out of there. All right, Willie, go on. Bye, Mr. Jensen. What did you think you were doing? Mayor Hoover threatened to send me to reform school. Well, that's just a joke, Toby. But what Mr. Jensen's going to write about us won't be any joke. Why should he write bad things about us? Nobody did anything much. It was a nice, quiet day. Sure. But when you get to be an old man and read about Dodge City in the history books, well, there just won't be any quiet days at all. Why? Well, because the quiet days, the ones where people didn't do any fighting or killing or steal each other blind, well, they just won't be counted in the history books. But doesn't the good Lord count them, Mr. Herb? Yes, Toby. He counts them. Well, he cleaned up the country, the old Wild West country. He made law and order prevail. And none can deny it, the legend of Wyatt forever will live on the trail. Oh.